Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 4 and final video about the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with part 4 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic regurgitation. Now let's talk about the echocardiographic features that may prompt referral for intervention. The timing for intervention for severe aortic regurgitation is a clinical decision. The most common indication for surgery is the presence of cardiovascular symptoms, in which case a comprehensive echo with accurate assessment of aortic regurgitation severity, left ventricular function, concomitant valve disease, and an assessment of the likelihood of pulmonary hypertension is essential to aid surgical planning. In asymptomatic severe aortic regurgitation, Several echocardiographic findings play a crucial role in determining surgical eligibility, including index left ventricular linear dimensions, left ventricular ejection fraction, and aortic dimensions. It is useful for echocardiographers to be aware of these specific high-risk criteria and highlight them in the conclusion of the comprehensive echo report, thereby supporting optimal patient management. For those patients with asymptomatic severe aortic regurgitation, it is vital to ensure any changes in left ventricular size or function are escalated as these findings are predictive of the development of heart failure and significant determinants of survival and functional outcome following surgical intervention. In terms of aortic dilatation, the valve morphology, and the presence of an underlying connective tissue or genetic disorder all play a role in determining the threshold for surgical intervention. So, what are the red flags that may prompt referral for intervention? A left ventricular end of systolic diameter more than 50 millimeters. A left ventricular end of systolic index diameter more than or equal to 25 millimeters per meter square. A left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 55%. An ascending aorta diameter more than or equal to 55 millimeters in all patients. An ascending aorta diameter more than or equal to 45 millimeters in special populations. Or patients with rapid dilatation of the left ventricle approaching surgical threshold. Now let's talk about additional cardiac imaging in the assessment of aortic regurgitation. Transesophageal echocardiography can be used to complement transthoracic echocardiography, providing clarity in relation to valve morphology and mechanism where image quality is suboptimal or when surgical aortic valve intervention is complex. Cardiovascular magnetic resonance is less susceptible to the acoustic window limitations of transthoracic echocardiography and can provide useful information in relation to left ventricular volumes, regurgitant volumes, and the quantification of cardiac remodeling. And cardiac CT scans are useful in the evaluation of aortic size and shape. 
I'm going to leave this table here, so have a look. This table shows the parameters by method and severity grading recommended by the British Society of Echocardiography. Now let's talk about the role of exercise stress echocardiography in the assessment of aortic regurgitation. Exercise stress echocardiography is not useful in the evaluation of severity of aortic regurgitation. During exercise, heart rate increases which reduces the duration of diastole. Consequently, at peak stress, aortic regurgitation is less obvious and the severity may be underestimated. However, Exercise stress echocardiography may be useful for the assessment of contractile reserve. In asymptomatic patients with severe aortic regurgitation, a lack of contractile reserve predicts adverse outcomes. Exercise stress echocardiography also provides opportunities for the unmasking of symptoms precipitation of exercise-induced arrhythmias and overall functional capacity, or may identify other causes for symptoms such as ischemia. And where there is a discrepancy between symptoms and aortic regurgitation severity, exercise stress echocardiography may assist in clarifying this discrepancy. Now, what are the key points when using exercise stress echocardiography for the assessment of aortic regurgitation? First, exercise stress echocardiography should not be used to evaluate aortic regurgitation severity. Second, exercise stress echocardiography may be useful for assessment of contractile reserve and third, exercise stress echocardiography may be useful for unmasking cardiovascular symptoms or alternative pathologies. Now let's talk about acute aortic regurgitation. Acute aortic regurgitation differs from chronic aortic regurgitation in several important ways. The etiology is often very different. Infective endocarditis and aortic dissection are the most frequent causes of acute severe aortic regurgitation. Less often, it occurs as a complication of transcatheter procedures or blunt chest trauma. Because chronic aortic regurgitation progresses over many years, there is sufficient time for compensatory left ventricular changes to develop. Acute severe aortic regurgitation allows no such compensation. Consequently, left ventricular filling pressures and left atrial pressures become significantly elevated. Now, key points for the assessment of acute aortic regurgitation. First, the assessment of acute severe aortic regurgitation is very different from chronic aortic regurgitation. Second, patients with acute severe aortic regurgitation are often very unwell and imaging is often challenging. And third, the left ventricle is often normal sized with normal or hyperdynamic left ventricular systolic function. Now have a look at this table where you can find the classical features of aortic regurgitation in the chronic and acute setting. Now let's talk about combined valve disease. Aortic regurgitation combined with aortic stenosis is often referred to as mixed aortic valve disease. Mixed aortic valve disease is common due to an increased prevalence of aortic stenosis 
within the aging population and other known etiologies which cause dual pathologies. In the setting of combined valve disease, a comprehensive assessment of all valve pathologies is mandatory. The severity and prognosis of mixed aortic valve disease is closely related to the aortic valve max velocity and any high risk feature of either aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation should prompt intervention for mixed aortic valve disease. Now, we can conclude that the prevalence of aortic regurgitation within the population is increasing. As such, the role of transthoracic echocardiography in the identification and assessment of aortic regurgitation becomes increasingly important. High quality, accurate and reproducible echocardiographic images measurements and calculations will facilitate improved determination of aortic regurgitation severity. This will ultimately improve decision making in determining the optimal time for intervention, resulting in improved outcomes for patients. I hope you like this video about aortic regurgitation and aortic regurgitation assessment. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you on another day. Bye.